Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. One way to improve your drawers and really take them to the next level is to add something called drawer slips. Really improves the performance if you're not sure what it's about. Stay with me. I'm going to show you how to do them. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. If I were to pick out my one part of woodworking that I enjoy the most, it would have to be building drawers and furniture. The reason is I love to cut dovetails, and there's lots of dovetails there, but I also love that level of precision. A really good fitting drawer you can close by just pushing in on one corner. Doesn't bind, doesn't twist. There's no detectable side to side movement, only up and down, which allows for seasonal movement. Now, one way that you can up the drawer in terms of precision, in terms of how it fits, how long it's going to last, and the overall look too, is to add something called drawer slips. Now this is not very common in the United States, it was or in the Western Hemisphere, but far more common, in, especially in the UK. And I learned a lot of this from Alan Peters. And what a drawer slip does, it allows you to make a very thin drawer side. So the first question is, well, why would you want a thin drawer side? Well, it lightens up the drawer. Instead of having a big clunky side that increases, doubles the weight of your drawer, you can get away with a very light drawer that has lots of capacity to hold contents. And because you've got dovetails front and back, that little thin drawer side is more than adequate. The only time it comes a, becomes a problem is when you look at the wear surface of that drawer. Thin drawer sides produce a very small wear surface. If the drawer is not getting used a lot, it doesn't make much of a difference. But you'll notice on some antique furniture how the grooves have actually been worn in the sides of the carcass to the point where it's very noticeable. Well, what you do is you simply increase the width of the wear surface by adding this drawer slip, which is nothing more than a piece of wood glued to the inside of the actual drawer side. That is the part that gets a groove cut in it to house the drawer bottom. But without having to make big wide drawer sides to increase the wear surface, you simply have these little strips. And oftentimes what you can do is use a much harder wood, which again is going to increase the wear. You're not only increasing the wear surface on the drawer side, but you're also increasing the wear surface on the carcass. So essentially you're going to double the life of that drawer. And in what's nice about these is you can apply these drawer slips as a part of the original build, where you can even go in and modify it. So if I wanted to, I could go in and I could take the bottom out. I could make a drawer slip that fits into the existing groove. It's, in, it's cut in the drawer side and in the front and then simply cut a groove in the drawer slip by shortening up or narrowing the drawer bottom to fit in that instead and effectively doubling my wear surface. But like I said, on something like this, it's not that critical because it doesn't get used that much. What we're do, we're go we are going to do is go in and complete this drawer. So I've already built this drawer with the intent of doing drawer slips. That's why there's no groove cut on the side. We're going to go in and we're going to make them out of that same mahogany and you, could, you don't have to do that. You have the opportunity to just make it less visible by doing it out of the same material. But I like to use a really white or a light colored drawer side just so it makes the dovetail stand out. However, this is aspen and when it comes to hard woods, aspen, although it's a deciduous tree, it's not very hard. It means it doesn't wear very well. Um, so in this case, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the mahogany is much harder and I'm going to use a mahogany drawer slip and it acts as a bit of a feature when you, are, when you open the drawer and there's different treatments. You, you could actually fillet that so that it was had a nice flow to it. I'm not going to bother for what these are. I'm going to put it in. Everything's going to be square edged. I'm going to double the width of the drawer side so the drawer slip is going to be the same width. That'll effectively double it. I'll show you how we go through and make these, but I'm going to go first and process some of this material so we can get ready to go. I find it easier if I take one piece of wood and I'll do both sides of it so that we all we have to do is split it down the middle and we've got the two of them ready to go. All right, let's get some rough dimensions before I go off and cut some material. So I want to sink that right to the bottom of the groove because I'm going to register that drawer slip in the groove that's cut in the front. 
I want to come right to the back of this. So that's 13 and 13 16. So I'm going to cut a 14 inch piece and then I'll trim it to fit. So 14 by, I'm going to double this up. So that measures 7 16. So we're going to go with a half. And we're going to make two of them um, out of one piece. So that would be a half, but we need to add in the fact that we're going to have a saw curve. So I'm going to go inch and an eighth. And then in terms of how wide they're going to be, we have to run from the bottom of the existing drawer up to at least the top of the groove, but then we have to cut a groove in the drawer slip to house the drawer bottom. So I've got to have some material sitting up on top of the groove, and I'm going to go with an eighth of an inch. So that makes it, this piece is going to be, it looks to be um, about 11 sixteenths, so I'm going to go three quarter. So we'll go three quarter. Again, we're going to trim to fit. So I need one piece, 14 by inch and an eighth by three quarters of an inch. I'm going to use a piece of mahogany, match up the color, something that's good and hard wearing. Okay, so there's our piece of mahogany, and it's wide enough to make two. I'm going to process um, a groove on either side. We'll end up eventually cutting down the middle to get the two. It's a little bit longer than we need it. It's a little bit wider than we need it, but that doesn't matter. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got to cut two grooves, one on either side. You can do this with a router. You can do it with a table saw. I'm going to use it with my drawer bottom plane just because it's nice and quiet. So nice thing about this, you just keep planing until it stops pulling a shaving. That's when it's bottomed out and it guarantees that the groove is going to be uniform depth front to back. There. All right, so that's what we have right now. So I've got 3 16 clear on both sides. So I'm going to set my marking gauge for 3 16 of an inch. Lock that. This is the front. So we've got to cut, we've got to cut this shoulder off and we've got to cut down here off. We want that to be nice and square so that it fits up perfectly against the inside of the drawer front. We've got to cut this part. We'll keep the tongue and we've got to cut the bottom part. Now to make that cut a little more accurate, I'm going to come in here and cut a little chamfer on the waist side of that gauge line. So when I start to saw, I'll have a little wall to work against. Do that on both sides. I cut that a little deeper than the marking gauge went, so. Just go in and score that a little deeper so that'll free those pieces up. All right. sides. We drifted off the line a little bit, so we'll have to come and correct that with the chisel. Now, before we remove that material, I'm going to set the marking gauge right on that little shoulder so we can continue this cut.
Now if the grain is straight, we can come in here and we can actually do this with a chisel instead of having to saw it. <clears throat> we'll test it out here in the waste first to see if indeed it splits where we want. broke nice and clean. Should have known it was going to do that since I, I had undercut already. Now it's close enough that I can come in here. I shall go back to this one first and just check that. That'll pair it for me if I need it. Reset my gauge and then just come in and use that like a little mini router plane and that'll complete the cut. Now I suspect we're gonna have to make this a little thinner simply because that groove I don't think is the same width as the cutter in my drawer bottom plane. So I think I actually cut that on the table saw. That is a little bit thick. I want the stop. I want the top to stay the same. So I'm going to come in here and just slice a little off of that. Now you could do this with a shoulder plane. You could do it with a chisel, but I'm going to mark it first with the marking gauge, and I can probably slice it with it as well. It's an advantage to having a marking gauge that's really sharp. I have several different style of cutters. Some are large diameters so that I can reach down in a little farther if I have to. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So because I can get at it up here, I'll set that shoulder in tight. Come down here, and what I'm using is just a plain blade that doesn't have a back bevel on it. So I can come in and reference it against the back. And then just using the corner, deeper you can make that little wall, the easier it'll be. Now we've got to remove all of this material, but we're actually going to come in there and shorten this as well because we only want to go back to there. But I'll get my cut first right on that shoulder line. I'm not so sure I want to try to split that. It's awful long, so I think what I'll do instead is I'll saw that out.
Now I'm a little concerned because the marking gauge is at the top of the uh, of the groove on this side, but it's not the same over on this side. So we've got a little bit of variation in there. Not sure how that happened. We'll see how it plays out when we actually come to fitting it. Sometimes when you got a small piece over in here, in order to keep the saw tracking, you got to squeeze against it so the saw doesn't want to fall out toward the side of least resistance. When you're using this tool, you got to be aware that when you're out here cutting, the tool's wanting to tip like this because of the shape of the blade. So you have to put a lot of force on that hand that's holding the tool down to the reference face, which in this case is right here. See how that fits. That's still just a little bit snug up there. So let's use the router plane in the same way. Okay, so there's the fit that we want. We still need to trim this. Now, just so that you understand, it's we're gonna split this in half, and this surface is gonna go up against here. You're not gonna see a gap on, on the uh, inside. Okay, so we want this to be 3 8 so I'm going to go over the table saw and rip two strips 3 8 of an inch in width. Okay, now I want to plane that inside, get rid of any irregularities from the table saw. See that burn? What I'll do is take this blade and just carefully I don't want to push down on here. I want that to 
bow under the pressure of me pushing on it. I she should have clamped it. Okay, my next task is to bring it right down to the line. I'll leave just a whisper so that I can flush it up when I actually glue it in. I'm gonna take that to the table saw because there's about three thirty seconds of an inch to remove. But then I'll do the final little bit right here on the shooting board so I can actually see the line as I'm planing. Now, the problem with the challenge with this type of a drawer where the drawer front sits lower and it does that so that it can hide the drawer divider is you really can't plane into here. On a regular drawer, you would just simply flush this up. It's not a problem, but so I've got to get this really close, at least at the first couple of inches. I can then get my block plane and do the rest. Okay, we got that where we want it, so we'll come in here and do the same thing and marking that back. Best glue spreader there is. Now I'll just put a very little bit on either side of that tongue. That was more than I wanted. And then we're going to want some right here where it sits on the top of the drawer back. Carefully put this in place. Hold that down. Don't clamp as to leave marks. You just need to bring the two pieces of wood together. Okay, last step is to flush this up. Now the first thing I want to do is just take off any little bits of glue, primarily so they don't hold the plane up, cause it to cut unevenly. Now, I want to be really careful not to tear the grain, so I close my throat down. Maybe a little bit right there. And that feels good into the corner. That's enough. Okay, last step. We'll go in and insert our drawer bottom, but I gotta measure it first. So I want to use my steel rule. You can use either solid wood or plywood because of what I'm using this for. I'm gonna make this one out of Baltic birch plywood. So bottom of the groove to bottom of the groove is just under 13 and 5 eighths. I'll plane to fit, and then bottom of the groove to the back is 13 and 7 eighths. I uh, cut a shallow rabbit on three sides to get that to fit just right. And I'll 
put two screws in the back. You don't have to worry about expansion on plywood. But there you go. Looks neat. Increases the life of the drawer by at least double just because you doubled the wear surface. And yet there would be no appreciable increase in the weight of the drawer. And remember, you can do this to a drawer that you've already made. You just have to cut it so that it has a little tongue that goes into the existing drawer bottom groove. Good luck. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.